What's up, passionate DJs, and welcome to today's video where we're talking about the Pioneer DJM S7, which is a wonderful two-channel battle mixer uh, from Pioneer. Great for Serato users, but also great for Rekordbox users. Uh, this was a mixer that, along with the DJM S11, uh, replaced the infamous S9. And so it carried over some of the trends that it helped set, such as the uh, paddle style effects and that sort of thing. And so uh, the S7 uh, has been out for a little while now, and uh, I'm finally bringing this review video to you. And I say finally because I actually meant to release this several months ago, um, and some of you who are already subscribers to the channel probably wondering why this never came out because you saw me post other stuff about the S7. Uh, and the reason is I had a hard drive crash right about that time, and uh, so it made it a little bit difficult to publish the video that I was in the middle of working on. So some of that footage was recorded back then. Uh, we had a uh, DMC Champion uh, DJ come in and demonstrate it for us, so you'll be seeing some of that today. Shout out to Spare Change, and we're glad to have him here. Uh, and while we had the mixer here, uh, Tony here at Passionate DJ liked the mixer so much that he actually went and bought one on his own, and this is sort of the weapon that he's been using to level his scratch game up. So uh, we have a lot of history with this mixer already, so I'm glad to be able to finally share this review video with you guys. So like I said, this is a two-channel battle mixer. It comes in at $1,400, uh, and it is pretty comparable to its uh, larger sibling, the S11. The main difference being it doesn't have the built-in screens and that sort of thing, uh, but it is generally uh, the same layout and has a very similar functionality. And then the big draw for this mixer, uh, I know this was true for Tony, was that Magvel Fader Pro, which is just a buttery smooth crossfader, wonderful for those super sharp cuts and scratches and intricate little crossfader cuts and things like that. Stuff that's too complicated for me, but uh, that you scratch DJs will love. So we're gonna dive into this thing, see how it stacks up to not only the S11, but other similar competition on the market, and see if this might be the right mixer for you. If you do think this is the right mixer from you, you should head on over to the DJHookup.com who made this video possible. The DJ Hookup is the highest rated online DJ retailer, so head on over there, get in their chat bar, ask them about the DJM S7, and tell them that David from Passionate DJ sent you. They, they're not even on my level at all. Not even on my level. 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 Here we go again. Little nerdy jerk, take this and watch the birdies chirp. DJM S7 is the latest two-channel mixer from Pioneer, which aims to sit in the middle of the battle mixer market. It inherits many great features from Pioneer's flagship battle mixer, the S11, including all 22 bit speed effects, its Serato-specific features like combo pad mode, scratch bank, and gate cue, and its 16 large performance pads. The effects can be engaged on the fly using the onboard paddles, and it includes a high-quality Magvel crossfader for durable scratch performance. 
And with a clean, intuitive layout, Scratch DJs will certainly feel right at home. It enables free use of Serato DJ Pro and Rekordbox performance features, including DVS control of both, and it even includes Serato's Pitch and Time plugin for key shifting features. The S7 introduces two brand new features to the DJM Mixer line. One of them is Bluetooth connectivity, which lets you wirelessly play audio directly from your smartphone. You know, for example, loops that you want to scratch over. You can route them straight to the master output or to either of the channels to hear them with any other sound playing on that deck. The other is a new feature called Loop MIDI, which allows you to use these effects levers to send MIDI messages to Serato DJ Pro and Rekordbox in a rhythm that's synchronized to your music's BPM. The S7 comes in at a minimum advertised price of $13.99 and is available now. If you're interested in the S7, the S11, or any other DJ gear, grab it at the DJHookup.com, where you can get hooked up with 0% financing so you can play now and pay later. Okay, so we're looking at the top of the new DJM S7 mixer from Pioneer, and I usually like to just start at the top and work my way down. So, of course, up here at the top of the mixer, we have sort of a mirrored layout here. Uh, we've got your browse knob at the top, very nice and tall, uh, large knob, and also the load buttons, have, uh, they have an increased size uh, over the old ones, and so you can use that to, uh, you know, browse your tracks here. Now, just a quick uh, note about how I've set this up here today. Over here on the right, I have, uh, this is actually an XDJ1000, but this can, uh, this basically is functioning as a DJ controller in Serato. So I'm not using the line hookups, I'm just using this to control Serato, and the audio is coming from the USB uh, audio card built into the mixer. And over here we just have uh, a, f a record going into the phono ports on the back, and it's just playing straight through. That brings us to the little slider switch here. If you switch it over here, you can switch it to A or B, uh, depending on which USB port you have your laptop connected to. But since we're just playing a record on that side, I'm leaving it on phono. Now you've got your uh, EQ here in the middle in your uh, mixer section. And one thing that's different about this as compared to the S11, which is longer, um, the filter and the trim are instead of in line with your EQ they're over here to the side so uh, you know whereas you might have the trim or the gain knob up here and the filter below they spread that out a little bit and they save some of the length of the mixer anyway this is something that's really easy to get used to you just adjust the gain on your track here do your low pass and high pass here depending on which way you turn it and I'll give a quick example of that so over here we've got this record going and I'm going to give this a little bit of a treble boost just because this is an old record. And uh, skip ahead to a beat here. High pass filter to the right. Sounds very pioneer. Low pass filter to the left. And here's what your filter cut, or excuse me, your EQ cut sounds like on your low EQ. So just to give an idea of how that sounds. Now you've got your loop controls right here. You can set an auto loop by just tapping that and you can have it or double the size of it uh, right there. Now right here in the center, you've got your effects section and we're gonna come back to this in just a moment and explain how that works. Here you've got your performance pad section. It's got all your basic things that you would expect, uh, including all the Serato functions, uh, your roll and your save loops and your samplers, all that stuff works as you expect. Now when you get here to the drum pads, you know, they feel very good. They feel like uh, literal drum pads. And what I mean is there's no throw to the buttons. There's no like uh, click to it or anything like that. It's just, um, it's a pad, and it feels like uh, really good for, for finger drumming. You know, I can really get in there and go pretty fast. So, like I said, I've got this connected to Serato right now. So, yeah, they feel great. Under that, we've got your uh, well, you got your sampler volume over here, just to you know 
quickly adjust your sampler volume. Over here you've got your headphones controls. You can choose if you're monitoring only channel 1 or 2 by sliding that slider over there. Uh, here you can choose between your cue and master, what you're hearing in your headphones, or a blend of the two. And this is your overall headphone volume. Okay, now let's come back to this effect section right here in the middle. Now the way this works is uh, it has 22 built-in beat effects. So they're the same ones that are on the DJM S11. And uh, those are the beat effects are basically hardware effects that are built into this mixer. So they will work uh, no matter the source, including uh, a vinyl record here. So you don't need Serato for these effects. Uh, so you know if we wanted to apply a quick reverb here. works you know in hardware now the other thing is uh, basically the way this works is you've got your uh, th three on the left and three on the right and they are just kind of preset uh, beat effects but there are 22 of them on here there are more than six beat effects so the way that works is if you want to change one of these you can just hold it down so here's echo and then you just twist the browse knob and you select which of the effects you want it to work uh, or select and it shows up on this beautiful tiny little uh, high resolution OLED screen there that's above the level and depth here. So that's what that little screen does. It kind of shows you your effects and you can select them there. Now if you want to make those changes permanently you can actually get into the settings utility on your laptop and then you can set those uh, you know some of those other of the 22 beat effects to your own kind of configuration here and you can set the buttons to be whatever you want and then you save them as user banks and that's what this bank A and bank B are. Now those are the hardware effects, but what about the software effects, the ones that come in, say, Serato, which is what I'm connected to here today? Well, that's what you, where you look at these little bars under here, and you can see these secondary functions. Like over here, we had the banks. Just hold Shift and hit Serato effects, and you can see this is turned blue. So before, we had this dark blue. Change it to Serato, you've got this light blue. And this is now controlling your Serato effects. Now the cool thing about this is even on vinyl, Let's say we have the flanger, which is also set to this in Serato. It still works on the vinyl record because we have the laptop plugged in and it's running through Serato. Now, if we were to disconnect the laptop, uh, you could still use this to mix records, but you'd have to rely on the beat effects. But as long as Serato is plugged in, it'll route it through the software and you can take advantage of all Serato's built-in effects, even on an analog source. Now next we have Loop MIDI, and this is a brand new feature of this mixer. There's Loop MIDI 1 and 2. And basically what you're able to do here is uh, set functions on the mixer or set the uh, paddles on the mixer to send MIDI signals to the software at a certain rhythm, basically synced to the BPM of the track. So these loop MIDI modes are very customizable just depending on what you want to do. It has some default mappings, uh, for example, I think this one's set to do a reverse. Uh, you can set it to do things like uh, escalate in key, do key builds, uh, just anything that you could kind of automate and map to a MIDI setting so you can get extra creative with it. And there you go, it, that pretty much covers the effects. You get the 22 built-in beat effects. If you want to change them, hold the button down, twist the knobs there. If you want to change them permanently, you can set your own user banks. You also have your software effects that you can access there, and you've got your custom MIDI right there. Coming down here to the up faders, uh, this is one of the few parts of the mixer where you can really feel where some of the uh, uh, cost savings went. Uh, these up faders feel fine, but not great. You know, they're just kind of lightweight. They're they're functional. They're fine. Now, this is the star of the show, however, the Magvel Fader Pro, and this thing is amazing. Um, I really like how you have tension adjust right on the front. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a no-contact cross fader, and uh, basically about the best you can get, and uh, it's going to be really uh, up to the rigors of intense scratch and juggle DJs. 
Okay, so here we have the front of the mixer. Uh, everything that you need uh, ready access to as a battle DJ is right here. Uh, you know, that doesn't have directly anything to do with performance. So you've got your mic controls right here. You can control your levels here and your basic EQ tone right here. Um, you can set it to on or to talk over mode there with that handy little switch. Uh, down here, you've got your Bluetooth pairing mode. Once again, that is a brand new feature of the DJM S7. A lot of times when Pioneer comes out with uh, a new mixer, even if it's not a uh, top-of-the-line flagship mixer, they'll introduce new features to the line and see how it works, and so uh, that's what this is. So, you've, uh, you know, there's going to be lag here, so you're not going to use it in uh, live DJing, DJing context in the sense of uh, scratching and stuff like that, but it's good for, uh, say, if you wanted to pair your phone to it real quick and start playing a beat that you want to scratch over, uh, or something like that. If you want to take a request uh, from, you know, a friend and it's on their phone, you can just pair it real quick. Whatever you want to do, you can control that right there. You've also got your auxiliary control level right there. And then over here, you've got all of your curve adjustments right here next to your uh, large and small headphones jacks. So uh, up here, you've got your crossfader adjustment. You can switch it to reverse mode right there with that little switch. Um, and then you've got your curve adjustment here, so you can adjust it to a sharp cut uh, like it is now for uh, turntablism purposes for the that sharp uh, you know cuts and scratches. And then uh, you can do the individual up faders down here. Now, one thing that I really like about this mixer, uh, even at this price point, you get this really high end Magvel crossfader and you get uh, the external tension adjustment right there. So I know this is kind of hard to demonstrate on camera, but if you look, it moves really f freely like this. And if I move it over to the heavy setting, see, it's just not as bouncy. So you can set it to whatever you prefer. And you don't have to tear into the chassis to make any changes. And looking around here to the features and connections on the back of the mixer, of course this does have phono connections, so you've got your ground pegs up here. I like that there's two of them. Um, so uh, like I described before, we've got one turntable connected to our example setup here, and I've got one uh, XDJ CDJ device over here, um, but I'm not using it for sound. I'm using the built-in sound card for that. Uh, so this is just acting as a controller. And so I've got this guy plugged into the phono jacks over here. And uh, then I've got my master out going uh, to my mains, which is what you are hearing. Uh, then I've got my USB over here. There's USB-A and USB-B because this is a dual USB sound card. So you could effectively have two DJs with two different laptops and do those easy changeovers. Now you do have your line connections, of course, if you do want to hook up CDJs and use those as your sound sources. Uh, but one thing that I really like about the S7 is it keeps the uh, USB hub. You've got two USB ports right here that you can use to connect anything uh, like, like DJ controllers. So if you had a pair of Rain 12s, for example, you could connect them to this mixer and just plug them in right there. Uh, or in my case, I could plug in CDJs, XDJs right there. You don't have to involve another uh, USB hub. All I have to do is plug this cable into the laptop, one of these square USB ports, and then you can uh, connect your CDJs or controllers there. Uh, it makes for a nice, really clean, convenient setup. And you've got your XLR master outputs here, and then RCA master outputs there, and you've got quarter-inch booth outputs kind of hiding under there where you can kind of see them. And then over here you have your mic and your auxiliary input. Uh, the control of which we saw on the front panel just a moment ago.
Alright, so finally, let's compare the new S7 to other battle mixers that are currently on the market. So in regards to the DJM S9 that it's effectively replacing, it gets a few updates that were introduced with the more expensive S11. So namely, it gets the independent pad controls for each deck, and an improved Magvel Fader Pro Crossfader. Now here's how it compares to its more expensive sibling, the DJM S11. Most obviously, the S11 has a screen in the middle, and this is used for showing waveforms and for interacting with the software via touch. And this includes the ability to have some controls over decks 3 and 4 in the software, whereas the S7 is a strictly two-channel affair. Now, the S7 is a little longer, and the filter and gain controls line up with the EQs in a more traditional manner. It has twice as many effects select buttons, however it does have all the same 22 beat effects. The S11 costs $600 more than the S7. Of course, the S7 does have those two new features, Loop MIDI and Bluetooth. Now the most direct competitor of the S7 at the making of this video is the Rain 70. Now these two mixers are almost functionally identical, but they do have a few differences. Firstly, the S7 is a little bit cheaper than the Rain, which costs $14.99. And the most notable upgrade for me in this area is probably those effects paddles. So on the Rain, you have these heavy die-cast aluminum paddles that just kind of ka-chunk when you flip them, whereas the S7s feel just a little bit less satisfying to me. Now, however, the Rain has significantly fewer onboard effects, 6 versus 22, and once again you miss out on those Bluetooth and Loop MIDI features. And finally, there's the Reloop Elite, which is currently also selling for $14.99. And by the way, this makes the S7 the cheapest mixer in its class. The Elite is notably larger and less cramped. It has two larger OLED screens instead of that one tiny one in the middle. And overall, it includes most of the features that we've talked about in these other mixers, including dual sound card and built-in USB hub, though this one has an Innovator instead of a Magvel Fader Pro. Still up to the task of some heavy scratching. However, the Elite has no effects paddles, opting instead for button engagement, which is admittedly a little less satisfying. Now, the hardware effects aren't as good, and now that the S7 is on the market for even cheaper, that's going to be an easy choice for many DJs. So here are my final thoughts on the S7. Uh, I really like this thing. Uh, the only complaint that I might have is, like I said, I think that the paddles could be a little bit more sturdy. I like the uh, more aluminum and you know heavy duty ones rather than the plasticky ones, but that really is a minor complaint. It's not like I'm worried about them breaking. Um, it's a really solid mixer. It's got good built-in effects. Uh, it's got good features. It's got a perfect uh, crossfader, great for scratching, great adjustability, uh, including the tension. It's got a built-in hub on the back, which I know is kind of expected at this point. That's pretty common now, uh, but for a long time, it was really kind of a pain uh, for mixers like this, where you had to kind of incorporate a USB hub to, you know, add on things like CDJs or whatever if you wanted to use them as controllers. Uh, if you have something like Rain 12s or something that you want to plug into this mixer, you can just plug them straight in, uh, which is wonderful. It's got the dual USB connection, so it's great for those handovers or those B2B sets. Generally speaking, like I said, it really compares well to the more expensive S11 uh, if you don't mind going without the screens and stuff. If you don't want to have all that information or you don't care about having all that information right there in the center, um, either you don't need to see it or you don't mind looking at the screen on your laptop or whatever, uh, then you can save a lot of money and get this, uh, which is a great tool to add to your uh, scratch mix arsenal. I like to see that Pioneer is embracing Serato again uh, and that this mixer sort of lives in that dual ecosystem of Record Box and Serato. Uh, so it really helps bridge the gap if you either live in both ecosystems or you're not really sure. Uh, this kind of makes it so that you don't have to make that choice. So all in all, I think this is a great option at $1,400 for uh, the Scratch DJ who really wants kind of a, a professional tool for doing their scratch mixing and you don't necessarily need the highest end thing with the flashiest buttons and screens on it but you want a modern workflow modern scratch workflow you want it to work with serato and or record box and you need that just lovely buttery magville crossfader uh, this is a great option and i hope that you'll consider it and head on over to the djhookup.com order yours today once again tell them that you heard about it from passionate dj and until next time 
We'll see you right here on Passionate DJ. Keep on spinning. <laughs>